Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to be talking about astronaut selection programs because Russia announced this month that they're opening their cosmonaut selection program. But what does it take to be an astronaut? Find out in this week's video. Currently, there are six national space agencies that will send humans to outer space. The first one is NASA. This is one that we're all very familiar with, and unless you're a US citizen, don't even think about it. Number two is ESA, the European Space Agency, and that's who I work for. It's designed for citizens of ESA member states, which is not the same as EU member states. There are many EU countries that are not a part of ESA, for example, Bulgaria, Croatia, Slovenia, and Slovakia. There are also many countries that are not within the EU that are member states of ESA, for example, Switzerland and Norway. There's also a point that if your country contributes more to the ESA budget, then you're more likely to become an ESA astronaut. Number three is Roscosmos, the Russian space agency. Typically, they will send Russians to outer space. However, in the past, they've also sent citizens of other countries. For example, between 1978 and 1988, they sent 11 citizens from 10 different nations, including Bulgaria, Poland, and Vietnam. So if your country has close ties with Russia, then you still might stand a chance of becoming an astronaut with them. Number four is the Canadian Space Agency, CSA, and they're more relaxed about their astronaut selection program. Any Canadian resident can apply to their program. Number five is JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency. Number six is CNSA, which is the Chinese Space Agency. And India have also got talks to building a space station, so it's likely that they will be sending astronauts in the future to space. Overall, if you're a citizen of any of those associated countries, you can apply to be an astronaut. But the requirements of all these space agencies are not the same. Here are the age requirements for astronauts across the different space agencies. Notice how broad the age ranges are and how different they are. NASA and the Canadian Space Agency don't have age limits on their astronaut selection program. However, NASA astronauts have typically been between 26 and 46 years of age with a mean of about 34 and the Canadian Space Agency astronauts have been between 33 and 39. It seems like space agencies typically prefer astronauts to be a little bit older with a little bit more life experience but they also don't want them to be too old because astronauts could be training for many years before they even ever get to fly. And also some astronauts get chosen and they never fly at all. These are the height restrictions for the different space agency astronauts. They're chosen to accommodate the design of the spacecraft taking the humans to outer space. In general, you want astronauts that are not too short, but also not too tall. NASA used to have a higher upper limit for their heights, but it's been shrinking down smaller and smaller as the size of our spacecraft have also been shrinking smaller and smaller. At one point, NASA had to pay Russians a lot of money to modify their Soyuz capsule to allow for taller astronauts. And notice that for Roscosmos, their astronaut lower limit is one of the lowest heights for astronauts. And this is because Russians believe that shorter, intelligent people have a higher specific intelligence. Similarly to the height restrictions, there are the equivalent weight restrictions for astronauts. And this is because it's expensive to send any weight into space. Currently, it costs $10,000 to send only one kilogram of weight into space. So the lighter you are, the cheaper it will be for space agencies to send you into space. It's no surprise that you need to be smart to go to space. In fact, all of the space agencies require some sort of degree 
in a STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, or medical subject area. Foreign languages is also very important. English is an absolute must, but also French, Japanese, Russian, and Chinese could be very, very beneficial. This is because the International Space Station has different sectors that are built by the different space agencies, and they all function in their native language. So for example, if you walked into the Japanese sector of the International Space Station, everything would be in Japanese. Similarly, the Chinese have their own space station named Tiangong-2, and there everything would be in Mandarin. So if you want to board their space station, I definitely suggest you brush up on those Mandarin skills. Here are some other things that you might want to think about, and this includes getting yourself in good health, both physically and mentally. On board of the ISS, astronauts train for up to two hours per day. And if you're thinking about going to Mars, it could be as much as six hours per day. So I hope you like to exercise. The Chinese Space Agency requires all women to be married because they believe it makes you physically and psychologically more mature. Thank goodness I'm British. So it turns out that being an astronaut is difficult, but there are a few places where you could pick up some bonus points. So firstly is scuba diving. Extravehicular activity, or EVAs, where astronauts go outside of the International Space Station is very similar to scuba diving because you have to rely on an external tank of air and also you have to be careful of your pressure. And for this reason, astronauts who are preparing for an EVA mission will typically train within a swimming pool. Number two is extreme sports. This will help you be more adaptable and calm under a lot of pressure. Number three is piloting experience. And whilst this was more important back in the day of the space shuttle, where astronauts actually had to fly the thing, many space agencies still require it now because they believe it gives you good decision-making skills and judgment skills. And lastly, number four is camping. Going to space, you're going to need those survival skills. If you live on the ISS, it is not going to be as glamorous or as comfy as you might think you're not going to be able to shower or change your clothes for many days, and you're going to be living off tinned and dried food. Here are the number of astronauts for each of the space agencies. From the number of applications that they received in the latest selection rounds, we can calculate the probability of becoming an astronaut in each of these space agencies. China only selects astronauts directly from the military. So the chances of you becoming a Chinese astronaut is going to be very, very low. Canada also has a very low probability rate. The best odds, however, came from Russia with a 2% probability of becoming an astronaut. And this turns out to be due to the very low number of applications to their astronaut program. In 2018, Russia only received 420 applications to be a national, compared to NASA in 2017, who received 18,000 applications. This is likely due to Russia's application process being very long and very difficult. So there you have it. I want to thank my friend and ESA space station flight controller, Angie, for helping me out so much on this week's content. Issa, if you're watching, I checked all of those boxes. So if you're in need of an astronaut, just call me. And you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this week's video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe.